I'm ready. Okay. Well, Greg. All right. I want you to know we did get a little bit of the I'm ready in there at the start. Oh. Yep. All right. Whatever. So, hello and welcome to uh, Unscripted Car Talk with me. My name's Justin. And my name's Greg. And together we're going to sit down and uh, discuss cars uh, with... Like, there's no script. It's just a general outline of things I want to talk about, and I probably won't even touch half of them. No. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so, so uh, Greg, how are you doing today? I'm doing fine. How are you? I'm, I'm good. Anything uh, exciting coming up for you? Not really. Getting ready for Christmas. Oh, no. You're getting ready for a birthday, old man. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm getting ready for a birthday, too. <laughs> It all comes all at one time there for me. Yeah, I know. Well, I mean, I'm I'm excited for Christmas too. I'm excited for your birthday as well. I know because man. we're gonna have to throw down big. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not every day where you turn my age. Yeah, I mean, well, you only do it once unless you can add another hundred on. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man! Now, let's face it; we both like fried food and beer too much for that to happen. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> we so, too, we too much, man. It, too much. Well, I mean, yeah. Ooh. Anyway, so um, like like every year at the end of the year, we're just looking back and reflecting, and we've realized that 2016 is kind of garbage. <laughs> yeah, we're just waiting for it to end, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. We might actually burn. Uh, a pinata in effigy it says big two zero one six i couldn't be nor <laughs> looking more forward to next year than ever before yeah so so that that made you come up with an idea of something you wanted to do would you like to tell me about it? oh yes my idea because <clears throat> i do a lot of thinking while my work <laughs> <laughs> um is to come up with the best cars trucks and suvs for 2016 now you know, there's a lot of cars that came out in 2016, you know, oh, well, not really a lot of cars came out, but a lot of, like, improvements and, like, facelifts and everything, mm-hmm. but I always want to talk to Justin and, and see what his top cars for 2016 is, too. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, luckily, Justin is here, so <laughs> <laughs> we can, uh, well, well, let's just, just jump straight into this, okay. all right? Yeah, let's jump straight, um, straight into this. Really, honestly, for me, the hardest thing to decide on was the SUVs, <laughs> because I don't care about SUVs. <laughs> well, uh, not me either. I mean, it's not one of my top things. I mean, it's better than minivans, honestly. Well, it, like, some of them are basically dressed up minivans. Yeah, basically. <laughs> the crossover is definitely... Definitely. Definitely. But... You're not fooling yourselves, people. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's a better step towards being cooler than getting a minivan. I mean, minivan is basically saying that I have kids, and I, and I don't really don't matter what kind of car I drive. Well, hey, not talking bad about yeah, the minivan. Yeah, let's not talk yeah. about the minivan. If you drive a minivan, kudos to you. You got no. all the space in the world. Yeah, <laughs> you're going where you need to go with all the space in relative comfort. Yes, and the only thing you're sacrificing is dignity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So. All right. All right. Well, I'm probably gonna get yelled at about that. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I am too. Yeah. Anyway. So, um, SUVs. Yes. All right. You. Why don't you kick it off? All right. So, I've chosen my top three SUVs. I have two, but I can think of another one. There while you we're go. Talking. <laughs> I'm sure one of them will be the same. Anyway. Yeah. My top three SUVs for 2016 in third place is the Mazda CX-3. Okay, well, tell me a little bit about the CX-3. I don't know anything about it. The Mazda CX-3 has gone through a re- like a really big improvement on the looks of it. It, it went from a drowsy-looking like SUV that's based off of Ford, um, was it Ford Escape. And now it's really it's really improved on it and everything. It's like it doesn't take much to improve on that. No, well. If this well, what they did is just basically make it look just like the Mazda Six. Okay. Yeah, and they gave it that cool looking grill and everything, uh, and yes. it even lights up like the same way as the Mazda Six. What? I was like, what? Yeah. Okay. So it's so, all it's all about the uh, the show. Yeah. Not it's, the girl. No. <laughs> it's not. It's not quick. It's not. I mean, but it put a few improvements on the like technology and everything, navigation, Bluetooth, well, of stuff. Yeah, stuff that they need nowadays. Yeah. Yep. 
Yeah. yeah. If 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 only one thing 2016 has brought us has been an improvement in car technology being available as like standard stuff. Yeah. That's what so it is. It's, yep. Yeah, we're we're eventually going to move forward to the point where Bluetooth is a standard option. Yeah, which it should be. It should be. <laughs> I mean, I mean, we move from what or eight tracks, cassettes, CDs. Eight tracks were optional. Eight tracks were optional. <laughs> so it was I? FM radio. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, you're right. Oh man. At some point, yeah. yeah. But you know how we move on through the technology and everything, and then now the next big thing that everybody wants is Bluetooth. You know, well, we kind of step them away from like the auxiliary cord now. Yeah, CDs and stuff too. Yeah. So I'm gonna just say it. I have uh, one SUV on my list, and the other one is basically the same one, just with a different grill. <laughs> That's fine. So, <laughs> so what I, I think I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pick my favorite between the two, okay. and then uh, see to my pants. I'm gonna name the other ones. Okay. So for me, uh, it's got to be the Third, let's see, third place. I don't think I can come up with anything in any rational order, so I'm just gonna say the uh, the Forerunner. There you go. Yeah, the 2016 Forerunner. I don't know a whole lot about it, but if it's got the same V6 as the Tacoma, it's not too shabby. No, no, actually, it's a great car, and it also comes in that awesome Desert Storm too. Oh no! Oh, don't yeah, tell me that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, if you get that okay. in a TRD package of the forerunner uh-huh it's great is it good off-road though yeah it is okay Actually, it's you, pretty good is that keep, you say that now but if i find out it's terrible i'm gonna no. have to hurt you no it's <laughs> good it's good it's, it still keeps to its forerunner roots somewhat it's not i mean it's not as rugged as a his granddaddy or it's anything the, yeah <laughs> the gen one yeah <laughs> but it's still you know it's still pretty capable of anything all right well and then from from there, oh uh, yeah, uh, right back to you. Yep, for your second place. My second place is the Porsche Macan. Now I ain't talking about the regular Macan. I'm talking about the Macan S, which comes with the turbo, um, <laughs> the turbo, um, <laughs> the turbo V8. Sorry. Um. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm, I'm glad it has a turbo something. Yeah. <laughs> it need, just runs on a turbo. Yeah. You need something to make that turbo spin, Holmes. I know. Uh, right. but, but it's very luxurious. It's the baby. It's the little sister of the bigger Porsche Cheyenne. But it's it's still, you know, just as luxurious. I like the way it looks. I don't really tell know much more about it. I just know it, that I like the way it looks. And that comes to second place for me. I yeah I I have literally not seen a picture of it until today when you showed it to me yeah <laughs> so I don't know anything about it except for I think that the Macan sounds like some sort of Indian dish you can order. <laughs> I know um, every excuse time. Excuse me, sir. Can I get two orders of tikkun and tikka marsala to go, please? <laughs> <laughs> I know you know how bad I want to say a pecan. <laughs> oh. oh, we got a pecan pie. <laughs> It's pecan. It's Calm pecan. Down. <laughs> Calm down. Oh, man. All right. Well, I mean, uh, Turbo V8 sounds like a um, like a worthy successor to whatever came before it. I forget the name. Actually, the Macan Cheyenne, is the Cheyenne. the Cheyenne, but the Macan is like the first of its generation, so it just came out new for 2016. What about the Touareg? That's a Volkswagen. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. Same thing. Oh, uh, that's gonna get some arguments. Anyway. Um, so, numero doso, I'm going to have to go with the Wrangler. The Wrangler? The Wrangler. Ah, because, yes. Because, you know, it's about the only thing left in the Jeep lineup that still feels Jeep. Yeah, it's and definitely. And it's losing a lot of that each year. Yep, pretty <laughs> much. It's a very soft version of it, so. Yeah, I very mean, squishy. <laughs> yeah, it's still nice, though. I gotta admit, every time I see one, or I sit in one, it's 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 not as rugged as the old ones. But it's still pretty nice. I gotta say, it's like I, you want you want to just take doors off it and just yeah. cruise and just cruise. <laughs> well, the the old ones had like no upholstery in it. So no, it was yeah. literally you sat on the metal tub. Yeah, and you rode in the back and just gripped onto the uh, rollover bar. Yeah, I know. My uncle had one, <laughs> and we used to. Uh, man, he let me borrow it for a while, and it sounded exactly like um. 
a train accident after <laughs> every single bump it went over. <laughs> yeah, just like I've never heard this <laughs> noise oh, before. Man. It really, really makes me feel unsafe, but it's so much fun. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, the new ones, I don't know if the magic is still there. Probably not. They're a lot bigger, which, I mean, if you're into going on trails, bigger is not what you want. No. If you're just taking it to the beach, I suppose that's fine. So yeah. bring your air compressor along because you <laughs> will have to deflate those tires. It looks a lot heavier than oh, it yeah. used to be. And another thing, they're like they're well equipped too. I mean, they don't have like crank windows anymore. They got automatic windows, and you got navigation. You know, some got leather seats and the carpeting and all the- this. This is it. not the Jeep I like. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not the Jeep that a lot of people don't like, but uh, well, it, that's the way it came to be. It's now. progress, I suppose. Yeah. Anyway, so now we're at it. We're at your number one for the SUV category. Greg, let's hear what you have to say. My number one. <laughs> SUV. I can't do a drum roll. <laughs> for 2016 is... The Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT8. Wow. Let, tell me a little bit about that one. The SRT8 Grand Cherokee Jeep? Oh, no, wait. It's not the ugly, Jeep. ugly Grand Cherokee, is it? No. Oh, that's right. They went back to a more classic style because they knew it was ugly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the ones that the regular one doesn't look as good as the SRT8 one. So, but yeah. anyway, it is... I've driven one before. Have you? Yes, I have. How many horses does it have? About well, 475? I can't say that because the one I had driven actually had a few upgrades done to it. Oh, I think I know the one you're talking about. That yeah. white one? No. The know. silver one? Yeah. I've seen two. One. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Wow. That yeah. silver one is loud. Yeah. yeah. It is <laughs> super loud. That white one, I, I saw that dude punching it. it uh-huh. Was Oh yeah, gone. But that silver one was all I remember about it was that it was loud. <laughs> yeah, it was super loud. It was super. I mean, once again, really nice inside too. It's not just you know, it's not all stripped down or you know all just racing type thing. But it's really mm-hmm. nice inside. Um, well equipped, very fast. Like Luxury even the stock and one. Speed, yeah, yeah, just very nice car all together. <laughs> And I'm sure that you also agree that it is a really nice SUV. Mm. That was my top pick for the SUV of 2016. Okay. Well, you want to know what I picked for my top SUV? Stop looking at my pick. <laughs> Would you like to know what I picked for my top SUV of 2016? I picked the same thing you did. Ah, <laughs> so we agreed on that top SUV. Yeah, I know. It's... Well, I have on my notes here, SRT Grand Cherokee, 475 horsepower, expensive as F. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is expensive. I mean, you can get the uh, the Durango yeah. RT, yep. which is the same chassis, basically. Basically, yeah. Yeah, for a lot less, but, I mean, you're not getting that horsepower or no. even that like level of luxury that uh, comes with the Grand Cherokee. Matter of fact, I look, I kind of digged into the RT Durango, mm-hmm. and RT Durango um, only makes three sixty yeah. as compared to the Jeep's what four seventy five. Yeah, massive four hundred and seventy five. Yeah, yeah. You always so, use an <laughs> adjective; it makes it sound impressive. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah. Apparently, we both like that Grand Cherokee. Good job, guys. Woo! Yeah, that's uh, that's one that we can uh, expect to stay good for a while. At least until they find a way to ruin it. Yep. So, should we move on to trucks? Because trucks were also a little divisive. Cars was the hardest to pick, but yeah. trucks, we were both a little... Cl- SUVs and trucks, we were both a little clueless on at first. Yeah. So... Um, all right, so we're... Trucks... Do you want to go first this time? Yeah, I'll go first this time go, because yeah. I don't even have three on my list. So no, I'm <laughs> flying by I'm the sure you, Yeah, you were flying by the seat of your pants. I've been flying by the seat of my pants, Holmes. Uh. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's see. For my third place, I'm going to have to put the GMC Canyon. Wow, oh, the yeah. GMC Canyon. Yes. That was a good one. I know, the uh, the Takarado. Yep. Oh, man. <laughs> As I like to call it, because they have decided to take 
because the Colorado has decided to take so much inspiration in its design from the Tacoma, I have dubbed it the Taco Rado. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, but the canyon at least does it a little differently. Yeah, so they do. that's why I picked the canyon over the I, Chevy. I like it. I like it too, especially um, the you get the sport model one with the off road package. Cause I've seen one. Oh yes, and it, has, it looks really nice. I like it too. Well, that's that is good. I I'm glad that we both kind of agree that it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Third place to me is just okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, Greg, why don't you hit us up with your third spot choice for trucks? Number three for my top trucks for 2016 is the Toyota Tacoma. Third place. Wow. Yeah. The, uh, I see you have written on your notes there, <laughs> Desert. Oh, the de- <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm very specific on my choice because the Tacoma and the TRD package with the desert storm mm-hmm. color that's all day okay I, I do that all day long well but, that's uh, that is yeah. a very impressive look even though i met somebody um and he had the orange one and that one was really nice too i have not seen the orange one it is really nice it's like a almost like a burnt orange or very coppery orange but um he he fixed his up he had lift kit and he got the um, Rockstar black wheels on it, but the black and the orange really pops and everything, so it's uh, great. Rockstar wheels. I know. I mean, you know, what can you do? <laughs> it's like they they go, oh, you know what looks uh, heavy duty on trucks? Ugly rims. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just my opinion, and my opinion doesn't mean anything in the grand scheme of things. But still, I do look down on you when I see Rockstar Wheels. Because yeah. <laughs> it's like, way to be original. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, Rockstar Wheels, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Well, um, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Although I suppose not everybody can put wagon wheels on everything. I know, right? Or uh, bullet holes. Yeah. So, Eventually people will get bored with that, too. Yeah, no. Even though it still works, though. It still works. Yeah. I own a lot of trucks. I would have got, if I got that truck, I would have done bullet wheels on it or um oh i would have done some te 37 bulk racing wheels on it but with the mud tires on it you've sold I see, me they'll, they'll <laughs> look really good too you know i think te 37 should go on everything yeah <laughs> oh man okay well my third place or did i do my third place already i did i went <laughs> yeah. first didn't i yeah so you went to so- so my second place choice okay. is the uh, Nissan Titan. Oh. Wow. <laughs> perhaps after I'm uh, just peeking over at your list, perhaps we should say what you picked for your second place choice. <laughs> my second place was also the Nissan Titan. Wow. Great oh, yeah. minds. Yay. And the fact that we don't know a whole lot of trucks. I know. What color <laughs> would you get it in, though? Um, if you had to pay for it. Not that color I saw earlier today. What color was that? Yeah. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't I don't really uh If you could choose a color to get one in, what would it be? Maybe our colors would be different. Yellow. Yellow. Oh no. Uh see. <laughs> no, uh uh-uh. uh mine wasn't yellow. Hold on. Mine would have been Oh shoot. I had it. <laughs> I don't want black. Maybe a white will do it. Oh we'll okay. get one in white. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I mean, but look at it. It looks so much like a, an early 2000s Ford. Oh, know? yeah, I know, right? <laughs> it looked just like the FX4 Ford. Yeah, I think that's what they were going for. <laughs> it definitely it, does. Cause, I, I mean, because why not? I yay! Know, yay! Even though, um, the, um, oh, phone, actually, oh. I'm going to take it back. I'm going to say silver or blue. Yeah. The silver one, actually, um, the. <laughs> Formula D driver, Chris Forsberg, mm-hmm. he has a silver one that has, like, a small lift on it. Mm-hmm. It's not a big lift, but a nice, nice little lift on it with some um, desert-style, like, wheels on it. Yeah. And then they look really nice. I really like that one, too. I think that the stock wheels that come on it look pretty good. Oh, yeah. The stock tires, too. And that's a good-looking blue. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I'd get that in blue, too. So, <laughs> if, you, if you're out there, Nissan... I'll have mine in blue, please. <laughs> and I'll have mine in white. <laughs> oh, white? Yeah. I still got the white. I Better still like the white. Yeah. 
I might have had to put black accents all over it just to even it out, though, because it yeah. got too much white and chrome. So you say uh, 5.6 V8? Yep. I think that the diesel did come out for the 2016 model year, but I'm not 100% on that, so don't quote me. Comment below if you think that the came out in 2016. You can prove us wrong. Actually, uh, if you have, if you are having some disagreements with our list so far, I will include the uh, uh, email link in the description below. So feel free to um, email us if you liked us, and if you didn't like us, feel free to not. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, I guess, oh yeah, it's back to my turn. Yep, back to your okay, turn. Okay, so... My number one choice of trucks for the year 2016, you actually did that a lot better than I did, <laughs> was the Toyota Tacoma, and I have written on my page, Desert Storm Color. Oh! <laughs> see, my third choice was your number one choice. Uh, well, you know what? That averages out to second place, even yep. though our second place is pretty solid, we <laughs> both chose second place. I know, place. right? Um, if you see kind of a trend here that we only... Even Pick uh, trucks that not really made in America, or not really American top trucks like Ford, Chevy, or Dodge, or none Dodge really. Well, that's huh. <laughs> Chrysler's been well; it's been well represented in the SUV oh, category. Yeah, you're right. Won that, yeah, so yeah, there, there we go. go. <laughs> yeah, there, go Dodge Corporation. You're doing SUVs just right. Trucks and. <laughs> Oh, man. I've got here uh, a little bit of specs on that V6. It's 278 horsepower, 265 foot-pounds of torque. Ooh, Which man. is not bad for a truck its size. No, no. That'll really get you where you need to go. Yeah, that's real nice. Yeah, and I believe that we you've kind of talked out the uh, Tacoma, and there's nothing more I can say about it, except for it does look really good. Yay! <laughs> yeah, so let's just go back to you. Number one spot, 2016 for trucks. Before I do the number one... Top spot trucks. Okay. <laughs> There's a little snippet of the uh, the taco, the Tacoma. The Tacoma? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It has a built-in GoPro mount on the front windshield that's built into it. And that, I thought, was really nifty, too. And I'm sorry. That's my little sign up. I'm sorry. I'm done. <laughs> okay. I've found that to be a little... Alarming. Yeah, I know. <laughs> anyway. Hey, you want to do something stupid? <laughs> well, luckily we've got a GoPro mount pre-installed. Okay. Oh, man. Anyway, number one choice of the truck of 2016 is... Bum, The GMC Sierra 1500. Crew cap. Da, 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 da. Well, I mean, that's... That's a choice. <laughs> it is a choice. It is quite a choice. I told you I'm very like. I know you like you like those GMCs. Yeah, I always have. <clears throat> oh yeah, I mean I like the Serratos too, but the GMCs just look a little more better. They always look better. <clears throat> yeah, Let's I ain't gonna say that the Denali because the Denali got too much chrome for the me. The Denali is over chrome. Yeah. you are correct. Yeah, but there is still a market for that, so they yes, won't it stop is. making it. Nope. <laughs> but. I do like the, I mean, I do like Sierra. I mean, it comes with a 6.2 liter V8. Uh, what else it has? Ugh. It got all the little bobs and gadgets and everything that everybody wants nowadays. I just, it's a, I think it's a really good looking truck overall. <clears throat> well, yeah, I mean, plus you get a lot of, um, a lot of really high end options in the GMC. Um,. Uh, but to be quite frank with you, I don't. You know, I I don't know anything about the new ones. I've been turned off of um, like streamlined full size trucks uh -huh. or mainstream full size pickup trucks for a while now, mostly because of how high their price has gotten. Oh yeah, and that's just a surefire way to disinterest me is to make something worth way more than it actually should be. Yeah, it should be. I mean, I mean, there's no amount of leather seats in a regular cab pickup truck that can make it worth almost fifty grand. No, but they've been doing it for a long time, so it's not. It's nothing new. We it, all know that all American trucks are been jazzed up since like the seventies. Well, mm. okay, so. 
Well, there, there you have it, guys. Pickup trucks talking. We talked about pickup trucks. There and you we go. Got it done. <laughs> <laughs> now we can get to something I'm actually t- uh, can actually talk about. Yeah. yeah. There you go. All the preliminaries out the way. Preliminary. So uh, I went first last time. Mm-hmm. It's your turn to go first on this category, Greg. For the car market. Oh yeah! All right, the car market is very wide and diverse. You could have hybrids, you could have super sports, you could have sports, you could have hypercars, you could have had family sedans, <laughs> you could have had I, I don't even know subcompacts, K cars. No, they're probably not K cars in no, 2016. No, especially not in America. Well, no, no, I don't know. What's a smart car? Anyway, anyway, uh, oh. anyway. So, Greg, kicking off 2016 best cars. Your opinion? Third place. Third place for 2016 best car is the Camaro ZR1. Now, I mean ZL1. Excuse me. Z. Well, your notes say R. Is that how it does? <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. the ZL1. That's a fantastic choice. Yes, it is. Especially since they approved it for 2016 with the handling and power. So not only does it runs really quick, it handles like a charm. Now. Wait a minute. Is the was it the ZL1 or the Z28 that outhandled the GTR? I believe it was a Z28 that handled the GTR. Okay. Yeah. And the ZL1, they haven't done really any kind of like uh, improvements on it. All right. Yep. Well, that. Burp, burp, burp. Burp, burp, burp. Burp, burp, burp. I mean, it's hard to improve past that point, really. Nope. Especially, I mean, Z28 would be my choice. But. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can ZL1 all you want. Oh, so, no. I, I like the way it looks. A la, a la, a la. A la, a la. <laughs> <laughs> a la, a la. Anyway, um, plus that Gen 6 look is just fantastic now. Yeah, it does. It's, um, it's, it's so strange to me. Like, the Gen 5 came out, and I was automatically saw it uh when it came out and i said wow that is really good look for the camaro i don't see how it can get any better then they went and made it better and it retroactively made the the fifth generation look a little worse worse yeah it's so crazy it's like when the 370z came out made the 350z look like clown shoes man. yeah i know right <laughs> you would think man the 350z looks like a joke now <laughs> i know but even though you can get them really cheap nowadays uh, really cheap is your definition of really cheap and mine must be different. No, I still I saw see people one. asking nine. Uh, I saw one. I saw one person asking like five or six thousand for one. Bing bong. <laughs> um, hold on. Let me just let me just silence this real quick. <laughs> there we go. There um, you go. My phone going off. We are consummate professionals, people. Very anyway. professional. Uh, so that was your third place choice. Yep. Wow. To put a Camaro so low on your list, you must have something (laughs) outstanding coming up. Yeah. Okay. So my third place choice would have to be the, uh, the 2016 WRX. Oh. I I did not go STI because, you know. With the extra wing and yeah, all stuff. that all the extra fancy stuff out there just automatically makes you a little bit of a target. Plus, I mean, WRX is a good place for uh, its price range. Yeah, it is. It's, I mean, you got 268 horsepower and an all-wheel drive setup with a six-speed manual. And you get zero to sixty in five seconds, mm-hmm. and that car oh my goodness i love the current generation oh yeah uh, there's been a couple of hit and misses for me as far as the uh impresses have been been over the years yeah. i um i liked just about every year of them although i didn't like it when it was a sedan only for the wr or a uh, hatchback only for the wrx i liked I was, it when they brought the i was gonna ask yeah. you i was like when they came out with the hatchback i mean did you I, like i the... fell off a little bit I, yeah. I was like what is this crap i know when they first announced there was gonna be a hatchback only i was like oh no no <laughs> i know but then it was like what a year maybe a two years and yeah, then they brought it right back yep because it should be always a sedan. In my point, in my opinion, it should be always a sedan. Uh, yeah, um, the new generation doesn't have as crazy a lines as mm. some of the previous generations no. have had. 
but it's a good contemporary look. Yeah, it is. I mean, some people criticize it for being a little too, too you know, bland. Yeah. Well, hey, you know what? It's it's a look that's going to last for a while. It's not going to be one that you. It's not going to be a a poster car. No. You know, it's not something you're going to have hanging over your bed next to your Countach poster. Oh yeah. <laughs> or, <laughs> or, or your, your McLaren F1. <laughs> or your um, crap. I uh, just saw that like crazy V12 thing the other day. All right. Well, whatever. Yeah. Not the point. <laughs> it's not a poster car. It's an accessible driver's car that's right and that's what it should be um so that was my third place uh your my oh second place <clears throat> yes yeah, your second place sir. <clears throat> my second place oh. car for 2016 thank you is an mx5 oh lord miata oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and with a base price of twenty four thousand dollars it's pretty cheap, actually. Yeah. For a sports car? Yeah, for a sports car. Yeah, that thing yeah. is just... Well, I mean, it's 155 horsepower. Yeah. So it's not like a barn burner, but no. Toyota has stated that they wanted it to not have as much of... To not be, like, super obsessed with the performance of the car. No. They want the car to be a predictable handling car. Yeah. With enough horsepower to have some fun in. Yeah. And that's what they've been going for for years. They're on their fourth generation now, and I think it's a fantastic looking car. Oh, yeah. Really, the only thing they've changed is they've moved the engine back yep. to make the handling just a little bit better. Yeah. And made it so that it can accommodate people who are taller than five foot seven. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? Because I, I don't know about you, but I fit in the first gens pretty well. <laughs> I've been in the first generation pretty well. I, I mean, it's been a while since I sat in the first generation, so I kind of forget what it feels like. Yeah. But it's like being in a go kart. <laughs> yeah, but I find it crazy that the the new Miata is only but like what a couple of inches longer than the original one. Yeah, it's so very it's just, small. Yeah, it's still almost the same original size, like as if it was in the first time they came out with it. And yeah. that right there is why I like it. That's why it's number two on my list. You know what? I have to agree with you. I think that that's a fantastic car, and I would have put it on my list if I had thought about it before you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, that's a high praise, though. I yeah. think it's strange that we can both agree on something I know, right? like that. So, my uh, second place choice, sir, is the Ford Focus RS. Oh. Finally, from from Europe... <laughs> The European bomb comes to America. Oh, the <laughs> we, European RS has finally grazed its presence yeah. over America's soil. <laughs> yes. That's like, sit down, mate. We'll show you how it's driving. <laughs> so oh, they what they made the most powerful Ford Focus ever, and then they made a handle. Yeah. We got 0 to 60 in 4.7 seconds. You got a sub-5 second. Front wheel drive car. That is quick. That is ridiculously quick. That is actually a, quicker than a lot of those, like really big sports cars, or even like the older '80s supercars in this day now. True. Very true. true. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I'd love to have just seen who was banging out that four point seven. I, know, right? I doubt that was the automatic. <laughs> um, but sir, no, that's insane. Not to mention. Uh, well, I'll bring it up again later when we get to number one. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, it's crazy that you got such a family-looking car that's both fun and easy to drive and can still be, you know, so powerful. And, it, I don't know, I think mostly it's this whole, it's new to us! <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> it's so it's, new to it's us. It's so that's exciting! Right. <laughs> uh, um, not, not to mention, it is well-built. Yeah. They have sorted out a lot of, like, from what I understand, a lot of torque steer problems with a oh yeah crazy with, LS limited slip. Yeah, but they do some voodoo magic in there. Voodoo dude. magic? Are yeah. you making a quote? Duh. Yeah. Okay. A, but it I sounds do, like you're making a quote. Uh, but I do like to make a quote on um regular the regular car review guy says oh. that you know a reason why a lot of people are buying these RSs is because either the wife doesn't want the husband to have a Ford Mustang GT. And he was like, well, how about this RS then? It's a fancy car. You can put all your groceries in it. And then next thing you know, the wife will be like, okay, all right. But she doesn't know 
that's really a real pocket rocket. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, hey, sounds like that dude knows what's up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, and I, uh, just a quick shout out to, uh, what's his name? Regular Car Review? Yeah, Regular Car Review Guy. Yeah, Regular Car Review Guy. Hey, man, uh, we saw ourselves in the background of your video when you were doing Cards and Coffee Rich, man. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, we're so internet cool. famous now, although I don't think anybody can even see us, and I barely recognized it. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> you, I just remember the text message, oh, we're in the background of this video, and I've watched it uh, eight times to find us. I know, right? I swear I saw us at one point, and I was like, No, you oh, did. I you found did. it. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, man. Just so remind cool. me, and I'll try and like screenshot from my laptop that one like one little half second clip I where know, we can works. see us. Yeah. yeah, and that's going to be posted to the Facebook page, guys. Oh, yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so, um, that was my second place choice. Okay. Your first place choice, sir, if you will. Number one car, 2016, Greg says... It is. And it's going to be a, a doozy of a car because a lot of people will apply the angle like think it'd be number one. It's going to be the 2016 Cadillac CTS-V. Oh! oh, that's a mic. Don't drop my mic. It's uh, <laughs> <laughs> a mic dropper. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. The, but, no, man, those CTS-Vs. Every single year of them, just oh, yeah. amazing vehicles. Oh, yeah. And this new one is no exception. No, it is. It is. Oh my gosh! Well, why don't you lead us off with a little bit about it? Okay. Um, first of all, it was a little expensive. It's like it starts out at eighty three thousand dollars. <laughs> I'm sorry. I must have misheard you. It <laughs> sounded like you said eighty three thousand dollars. Yes, it does. Eighty three thousand dollars oh my god i know right expensive right yeah well i guess they're really playing up that luxury performance oh price. yeah <laughs> but <laughs> with it with with the price you get a 6.2 liter v8 with 640 brake horsepower yeah. you get carbon ceramic brakes on it carbon fiber hood on it a lot of carbon fiber stuff yeah. on it. Yeah. You get carbon fiber uh, peppered in. Whatever yeah. they can carbon fiber in. Oh, yeah. So it's very light, very powerful. Yeah, 4,100 um, pounds curb weight. Yeah. So it's very light for a size. We you know it's not a small car. No. No. <laughs> no. No. I've seen them. Oh, yeah. Um. Ooh. And they out like they outrun a lot of the European counterparts too, like the M, like the M classes, like the M five. Right, I and, was gonna uh, say, which M classes are we talking about? Uh, M one? No, no, Not, no. Or the one M, whatever it is. Yeah, the little smaller. Yes, yeah, oh. the BMW one series with the M package. Yeah, Jesus, I never know what to call it because I say M one, and people go, "Oh, the seventy supercar." I'm like, like, "How did you know about that?" I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, the uh, one series M package. Or the M2, or the M3, or the M4, or the M5, or the M6, or the M7, or the M8, or the M9, or the M14. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, guys. How about some new names? I don't know. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I had a little rant there. Yeah, you did. You are ranting. No, no I'm just kidding. <laughs> You're but, fine. But if you want, I can design the M13 for you. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be a you, limo. Yeah, it'll, no, and it'll be an eighteen wheeler. <laughs> yes, it'll have uh, thirty eight wheels on it <laughs> somehow. Now I've needed an odd number there. Yeah, thirty nine, thirty nine, thirty nine. Hey, you're gonna get thirty nine wheels. <laughs> it's gonna have uh, thir- thirty eight wheels in a line, and then the front wheel is gonna steer. <laughs> it's gonna have just one steering wheel at the front. Oh man! So you actually did a reliant Robin. <laughs> Yeah, I did a super reliant Robin. Oh. It can't wheelie though. <laughs> <laughs> Even with its uh, t- twenty-one inline six motors slapped together to make it an inline, oh, man. whatever six Ooh. times twenty-one is. <laughs> I know, uh, two hundred and forty-six <laughs> cylinder motor. <laughs> All right, 
We had gotten off topic. We were yeah, talking about eighteen did, wheelers. Yeah, what did we do? Who? Did oh, we, I did oh, mine. Oh, we were talking about which. Okay, I was we just, went from Cadillacs to eighteen wheelers. Yeah, to two hundred and forty six <laughs> cylinder BMWs. Um, now, when you said that it was a real European car uh, uh, b- b- competition, yeah, I wanted to know which M series you meant. Oh, the um, it went against the M five. And the Mercedes Benz E Class AMG, oh, wow. and oh gosh, what's the equivalent? The Audi, um, I want to say A five or A six. Oh. Yeah, the S five. Oh or, yeah, yeah. Oh no no S six. I'm S6. sorry, X six. Yeah, S. I mean the A five is the coupe, and the S. I mean ugh, the A five. Oh, I can't get my numbers right, man. It's okay. Yeah. All European. Just remember, if it was a decent priced Audi, yeah. it was that one, and yeah. it lost. There you go. <laughs> so I mean, it, it you know it really beat them and everything, and it was six hundred and forty horsepower. Though man, that is a lot of horsepower. Though that is a lot of horsepower in uh, what is essentially a high performance luxury car yeah. that's supposed to be accessible by more people. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a weird line that Cadillac has always tried to toe. Yeah. between exclusivity yeah. of price and distinguish and uh something about like we we want people to know that we are serious competitors against european markets but we also don't want you to think that we're too european that you can't buy us if you're an american loyalist yeah that's what i'm saying it's it's yeah. really like that Cadillac ctsv is really expensive for even american car and oh yeah for even even, for even a luxury car uh, yeah. of that size I know it's really priced out a lot of people. You know, normally American cars are like really fast and really powerful, but you know, recently priced. Yeah. So well, I mean, you sacrifice a little build quality. As I know. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> it's like, bad. how long? How long will it last? How long are you paying for it? I know, right? Okay. <laughs> um. Oh. So yeah, that's a good choice. I yep. like that thing a lot too. Yep. Uh, moving on. To your number one, my number one, <laughs> of course, because I knew exactly where we were. I didn't need your help, sir. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. thank you, uh, because I was lost. Oh. Um, I was lost, but now I'm found thanks right. to the powers of Greg. Yay! Uh, I have the uh, Gen Six Camaro 2SS. Oh, yeah, that was a good one too. I, you know, but we had Camaro on the list. We both had Camaro on the list. We yeah. just uh, differed on the trim package. Basically, you have more trim package, yeah. and I have less trim package. Yeah, because I said, yeah, I actually have Gen Six Camaro. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes, four hundred and fifty-five horsepower makes zero to sixty in four seconds. Ooh. My good sir. So just imagine that the Focus RS is so fast it does. 4.7 0 to 60s and a 455 horsepower Camaro does it in four seconds. Ooh. Yeah. I don't know why you can just switch to RS with the Camaro and the RS be number one. Be- Even though it's like a little less powerful, but that's still a four cylinder motor and it's like not far off of a big old V8 powered motor. Yeah, <laughs> power motor. Well, really, um, I th- the reason that I put the Camaro first mm-hmm. is because I thought about, uh, like, what I thought was best for, like, what it is as far mm-hmm. as the car itself goes. The measure of it from from bumper to bumper. Yeah. What how much money is put into the car and how much performance you get out of the car. Yeah. Now, this is a completely different list than like, hey, um, if you had to pick the car that you wanted to drive built in 2016 and uh-huh. you, you're you going to drive it for the next two or three years making payments on it, what yeah. do you want? It'd be a completely different list. Oh, yeah. Completely different well, list. Well, I, I take that back. It'd probably be the WRX for me because that's yeah. a good, like, every dare. Yeah. The Camaro... Can be a good everyday, or I know a lot of people who every day they're fifth gens, and yeah, I mean, probably uh, I haven't seen a lot of people with uh, six gens yet. yet, yeah, but um, you know, so that's a good everyday. The Focus RS, good everyday as well. Oh, definitely, definitely, uh, yeah, it's almost a sleeper if it wasn't for all of the crazy I know, right? on the outside, yeah. <laughs> I was waiting for somebody to 
do a sleeper RS, just take the yeah. like drive train out of the RS and put in the regular focus and be like, boom. <laughs> Thank you. That's the Gen Six. Even though um, I find when I was driving the fifth gen, mm-hmm. it's the same as with most uh, Camaros. The figuring out how lo- how much of the car is in front uh, of you. Yes. Yeah. That to me, that um, is a personal thing. I'd have to just you know drive it more and more and get used to it. Yeah. But I think that the sixth gen is very good for what you're paying for it, and you're definitely going to have some a whole lot of fun, and it's definitely built very well. Yeah. So I would I would have to put it up there because they're still doing the. Uh, it's not the same chassis as the generation before but it's still it's kind still, of inspired by yeah. the australian one yeah which is so bizarre to me that the american market had to go across uh, the seas to uh, <laughs> the yeah sea. like he's like we need to come up with some you know a better sports car let's it, go to australia yeah <laughs> it's like how is australia making all of these great american cars i know right? <laughs> <laughs> and we are getting all of the Horrible off-cast European versions of them. Oh man, I know because you realize that my car out there is just—I just realized that it's the base version yeah. of the uh, uh, what's it called HSV over there in yeah. Australia. So it's like you he, know. he drives a Pontiac G8. In case you guys didn't know, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as soon as it's probably said HSV, people would be like, "Oh, yeah." Uh, oh. Some people would have perked their ears up and been like, "Oi, what?" I know, right? <laughs> yeah. You're right. You're right. Crikey. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. No, it's it's just it's blowing my mind that we live in a time where we're actually, these companies are putting out cars like this. Because for the longest time, uh, what was it, 2003 was the last year of the fourth gen. Yep. And um, they started up the fifth gen in 2005. No, no, it was longer than that. I thought it was like... Because it was after the G8 went out of style, wasn't it? Or well, about the it. same time. Well, I... It wasn't contemporary to that GTO that they did, did no. for a year and a half. Uh-uh. That, that, um... It had to have been before the G8 because... Well, no. It had to have been at the same time as G8 because that... Mine is a 2009, and 2009 was last year of the G8. Yeah, but they only did it from like 2007. No, well, they did it 2008, 2009. Oh, okay. Yeah, so two model years. So either it was during the G8 or after. Whatever the um, Transformer movie was. I don't know. I normally keep up with the the, the different <laughs> yeah. body styles with the Transformers. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's a interesting way of remembering. But, um, okay, we got a little off topic. But it was just bizarre to me that like during the entire time, Ford was still putting out a rear-wheel drive sports car. Mazda was still putting out a rear-wheel drive sports car. And the only yeah. thing Chevrolet had was their premium flagship stuff. Their CTSs and their mm-hmm. ST... Well, it might have been STSs STS. at the time. Yeah. And the Corvette. And there was nothing competing in that market. No. Like, General Motors all together they had a lot of cars. Like, General Motors built a lot of cars. And, mm-hmm. you know, when it comes to rear-wheel drive sports cars... Mm-hmm. They don't really make a whole lot of them. No, they don't. Mm-mm. They, it's like they, they look at it and they say, "No, <laughs> you people aren't worthy of us to make you good cars." I know. <laughs> you drive that horrible, horrible Malibu, and you like it. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> well, yeah. So that's to me. It's like they they brought it back with the fifth. That mm. was amazing. Everybody, you know, went their huggies over it. Now they've got the six. They've made it better, and I'm like, that's as far as improvements go. There's been a, a multitude, yeah. especially styling, especially the interior because the Gen the Five, interior. the Gen it's Five interior, the dash cluster was good. The yeah. rest of it was like, what is this? I know. <laughs> and then the, the fact that you couldn't get a navigation like optional. Oh, wait, no. You could have got a navigation optional, but it was this horrible little gross thing that kind of comes off the side because yeah. they designed the dashboard as if there was supposed to be no kind of like navigation on it. Yeah, I, at that point, they should have just had the radio as a stick-on because yeah. that stupid 
like merged with everything screen meant yeah. that if you wanted to do something aftermarket, you'd have been paying through the nose. Yeah, definitely. Or so, it'll be a total eyesore. Oh, that's a, that's a lot of things though. They're like, oh yeah, yeah. Especially new cars nowadays, where everything is so integrated and everything. Yeah. If you want to put an aftermarket radio in there, you can just instantly tell that that does not belong there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, what like one of the worst offenders I remember um, a while ago. The uh, one of the focuses with the early like Bluetooth system in it. Uh huh. I physically had it was a triangular shaped. Uh, centerpiece that had the climate control, yeah. the radio, and then it had a number pad oh, for yeah. dialing your phone on yeah. the go. <laughs> yep. It's kind of like, like you know, it kind of like, comes to a point. It's like yeah. triangular. Y- yeah. yeah. And that thing was both, like at the time, it must have been like, wow! And a year later, everybody else was doing a lot of that stuff better. Yeah. So it was like, that radio was garbage to start with. Ford, oh, yeah. Ford, I don't know if you've stepped up your game. I haven't been riding in any new Fords, but having been in several Ford vehicles from the late 90s to the mid-2000s, I can say that your sound systems are garbage. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. This is a call to arms, a call to action. Guys, get your crap together. (laughs) Oh, man. That was good. Yeah, well... All right, well, it's obviously very opinionated. I do like your list. I like that we've I like we had too. a lot of things in common. Yeah, so basically, yeah. uh, agreeing with each other's list is self uh, gratifying. I know. <laughs> I mean, there's probably one or two cars in there that you probably didn't agree on. Um, one car, probably the one you probably agree on is this one. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but the you're definitely right. The Mazda CX3, I don't agree with. Yeah. Because I don't know anything about it. Uh, <laughs> Therefore, I have no opinion at this point. There you go. So, thanks, guys. Uh, we're actually running a little long on this episode. Would you care to... We are at uh, almost 52 minutes. Okay. Wow. So, yeah, I know. Hour long. <laughs> yeah, episode. hour long. So, if you came for the lulls, if you came for the... Uh, just something to kill your time. Well, we've definitely killed a lot of time together. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, once again, Greg, I'd like to thank you for joining me. It's been a pleasure as always. Oh, yeah. Got, uh, do you have any closing comments before we go? No, my one closing comment is that I hate the fact that Ford has 5 by 8s uh, <laughs> There you go. <laughs> I want some 5 by 9s for goodness sake. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, so my... Uh, Guys, if you like the video, like it. Yeah. Uh, that was a little clunky. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. And if you want to hear more stuff like this, please subscribe to the channel. I'll have a link down below to my Facebook page and the email for the show so that you can chime in with whatever, whatever you want. You can give us suggestions. You can tell us that we're wrong. You can tell us that we're right. You can tell us that you love us. You can tell us that you hate us. Although, please don't tell us that you hate us because my ego is fragile. Also, I would love to see if y'all were to like, write to Justin on his email to see what your list is. Yeah. I want to see what your list is. I'm sure we know, me and you both know there's somebody out there yeah, oh, wow, yeah, that's a good one. We can yeah. have him on next time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would be a hoot. <laughs> yeah, it would be. Uh, but, yeah, send us your list and, you know, email to him and see if your list kind of matches up with ours. Yeah, if if there's anything that seems to be a prevailing um, pick, mm-hmm. I will definitely call those out. Like, whatever gets the most votes, I will call out. The people have spoken, is yeah. what I will say. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, chances are we're not going to get any emails. Still, Still might one. Yeah, I know. Uh, if we get one on yeah. here, if we get on here, then we can definitely be sure that we're going to have some very divisive things to say. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, anyway, yeah, this kind of interrupted the outro, didn't it? Uh, fifty-four minutes. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Guys, thanks you so much for listening. If you've made it to this point, uh, we love you. Uh, you're handsome, and I uh, hope you get what you asked for for Christmas. So please subscribe. Please like the video. And if you want to hear more of us, stay tuned because we will be back. 
Cheese and bacon. And as always, goodbye.